Swaddling allows your baby to feel a reassuring touch on his or her body. The blanket surrounds and contains him or her, as did the uterus and amniotic fluid in the mother's womb. Before doing this care, let's look at the main principles of swaddling. The arms and legs are bent and close to the body to reproduce the fetal tucked in position, which makes your baby feel secure. His or her hands are near the mouth as this position facilitates a return to calm. It's important to note that the blanket must allow certain movements. The goal is not to limit the baby's movements, but simply to offer a physical barrier and reassuring contact. Here's how to swaddle your baby. Before, obtain a blanket from the neonatal unit or bring a blanket from home if unit policies allow it. Place the blanket in the incubator for a few minutes to warm it up. This will increase your baby's comfort. If your baby is in a crib, this precaution is not necessary. During, fold the top of the blanket to form a small triangle. This part will be placed at the level of your baby's neck. Place your baby's neck at the top of the blanket. Roman's mother takes the time to hold her in a fetal position and maintains eye contact with her. Keeping her tucked in the fetal position, she moves her over the cover. Since she wasn't centered on the blanket, mom gently moves her and avoids lifting her as much as possible. She takes the time to hold her legs so that she's disorganized as little as possible. To help her do this, the nurse shows Roman's mother how to keep her in the fetal position and move her to the blanket to avoid lifting her. Lifting can lead to signs of stress in premature babies whose balance systems are still immature. This refers to leaflet number eight. Roman's mother continues swaddling by folding one side of the blanket over her daughter's body. During this stage, she looks at her, talks to her, and pays special attention to the signs of stress of her daughter. These manifest themselves through outstretched arms and hands and her disapproval that is visible on her face. Mom gives her the pacifier and covers her arms, which are bent. She checks the blanket under her daughter's body and gently secures it. She folds the bottom of the blanket over her body and makes sure to keep in touch with her daughter in addition to ensuring a reassuring presence with her hand. Seeing that her arms and hands are coming out of the swaddle, Roman's mother takes the time to replace the blanket in order to better contain her. If you are worried that your baby will pull on a tube placed in his or her mouth or nose, you can put small mittens on them. After, take the time to tell your baby that the swaddling is finished, if he or she tolerates it, of course. Be sure to apply soothing methods for the next few minutes to allow your baby time to reorganize and fall asleep slowly. This refers to leaflet number six. Remove your hands gradually so that your baby still feels your touch as he or she relaxes and falls asleep. Swaddling should be tailored to your baby's needs. Thus, there are two types of swaddling. The first is complete swaddling. Your baby's body is completely wrapped in the blanket except for the head. One can notice that Roman seems to appreciate her swaddling with her hands close to her face. Indeed, she opens her eyes and even seeks the origin of the sounds she hears. Similarly, this type of swaddling may be indicated when you hold your baby or give him or her a swaddled bath. There is also partial swaddling your baby's upper or lower body is wrapped in the blanket depending on the purpose of the care. For example, in order to prepare to change Roman's diaper, a partial swaddle is done. Thus, only the lower part of her body is exposed while allowing her to remain organized. Similarly, this type of swaddling can be done for a particular position or care. 
Consult the nurse to find out what type of swaddle is appropriate for your baby.